There are a whole lot of lies that narcissists tell, but here are lies that actually keep you with that narcissist. Lie number one. Lie number one is the biggie, the biggie, the biggie. And that is they'll change. And I know this so well because they keep coming back. They do that push pull thing, that push pull thing. You go all the way to the brink going, I'm out of here. There's no way I can take this anymore. And you might have even packed your bags. You might even be out of the door or it's a job situation. And you think there's no way I'm taking this anymore. And you're gone and you, you might have even quit. Then they pull you back. They pull you back with all the promises, their charm, that smile, that charisma. And there they are again, recognizing this little lie, big lie, huge lie. All these little lies that lie, that come up together, the hoovering, the, the love bombing, it will liberate you so hard, so much from the chains, the false promises, the bread coming, all of those things are just names for the same thing, really, in a way, which is the false promises that they don't ever plan to follow through on. They don't follow through on their promises ever. It's just words that fought, blah, 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 that come out of their mouth. It's that Charlie Brown thing. They don't follow through. I have a whole video on this. This one word changes everything. How do you know if somebody truly is a narcissist? One word changes everything. And that will empower you to forge your own path. Lie number one that you say to yourself, they'll change. Lie number two is I can't survive without them. This is a tough one because it comes into trauma bonding. It can, there's a lot that goes into this. And there's that dopamine hit that goes off in your brain. And that dopamine is, is that hormone of addiction. You want so much that pleasure back. And so when, when that's going off in your brain, especially when the love bombing is happening and they're telling you that you're the most beautiful, the soulmate, the person that they've never met before, and they're sweeping you off your feet and it's all amazing, right? Leave me when I say to you that you possess an inner strength that you don't even know exists and a re resilience beyond measure. And you're more capable of the surviving and thriving beyond anything that you know that you are. And you can be independent. When you leave, that net will appear and people will come out of the woodwork to help you. And it will be there for you and you will be liberated and you will be liberated from the suffocating grasp of this toxic person that you're in the midst of now. You can survive without this person. I know it doesn't feel like it now, maybe sometimes, but you can. The next one is it's my fault. They make you believe that it's your fault. They tell you that it's your fault and they make everything out to be your fault. It's your fault that they're not doing well at work. It's your fault that the finances aren't going well. It's your fault that your life is a mess. Then you're, you can't think straight after a while. Your brain starts not going well. Your, your your body is aching after a while. And they start deflecting blame onto every of everything onto you, fostering feelings of guilt and self-doubt. And, and, and you have to recognize that everything is not your fault. They have to take responsibility for their actions and it has to be a reflection of their shortcomings. It's not a reflection of your worth. You are responsible for your behavior. They're responsible for their behavior and you're responsible for your triggers and they're responsible for their triggers and everybody's responsible for their own selves. And once you understand that, then you can move forward. And that's what highly functional, healthy adults do. Don't take on guilt from other people that doesn't belong to you. You can put that down. The next lie is they love me. And this is a tough one because maybe they love you in their own way, but it's not a true kind of a love. Okay. Because really they're not capable of love. They love themselves in, in a way, but they don't even really love themselves. They kind of hate themselves. They're not capable of love. They're not capable of care. And so they can't really love you. 
It's not personal. It's the result of trauma that happened to them as children. It's the result of damage to that happened to them, to their limbic brain, the limbic system part of their brain during childhood. You know, while you can have empathy for that, it's not your responsibility. It's not your, your fault. And you can't take it personally. You deserve to be treated with honor and dignity and respect and to be valued and have self-worth to be able to assert yourself and to assert your needs and to have somebody meet those needs. Then you can meet that other person's needs. And that's what a healthy relationship looks like. And by challenging this lie, then you can start to see what that looks like. And then you can start to have a journey into reclaiming your self-worth. Another lie is that maybe you somehow deserve to be treated in a, a certain way, that you deserve the way that they're treating you. I deserve this treatment. I mean, maybe you feel like, oh, I didn't do a good enough job. I didn't meet their expectations. I didn't meet their needs. I fell short of being a good enough partner, wife, mother, business associate, what's negotiable are contracts, issues, and terms. And what's never negotiable is your self-worth, your self-esteem, and who you are. Nobody is deserving of emotional abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse. Your self-worth is inherent to who you are as a human. You deserve to be treated with dignity. You deserve to be treated with respect. You can distinguish between what true respect and honor looks like. The next lie is that they're the victim. They love to shift things around, especially covert narcissists, to make it look like they are somehow the victim, that somehow you are the one who are perpetrating something upon them. You interrupted them, that you didn't do something that you were supposed to, you didn't bring things up at the right time, that you are cold calculating. They want to evade accountability for their actions. And so they'll make it seem like you're the one who's deceptive. You're the one who's not trustworthy. You're the one who didn't put their needs first. They'll make it seem like they're the victims in this whole thing because they want to project and deflect and, and lie and deny. Crucial that you see through that. Again, prioritize your well-being and really know what the truth is of what's going on. The next one is that you're powerless. They try to make you feel like you're powerless. They make you feel like they're all powerful. They make you feel like if you ever leave, if you ever try to do something, that they're going to come after you, that you're not going to be able to have anything, that they have everybody lined up against you. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that kind of thing. But the truth is you have plenty of power. They're never as powerful as everybody thinks that they are. Never, never, never. The truth of the matter is they're way more afraid of you than you are of them. It's absolutely the case. You have the power to decide your outcome and chart your own course. The next lie is that you're never going to find anybody else. You know, this is specific for people who are looking for somebody else. You know, they tell you this lie like, oh, you know, you're so lucky that you have me. No one else wants you, not even your family. And they perpetuate these lies because they want you to be dependent upon them. They're afraid that you're going to leave. And so they want you to be overly dependent upon them because they don't want to be alone. They want you to only trust them to have all of your self-worth wrapped up in them. The next one is that you can fix them. I can fix them. I can stay because I can help them. I can fix them. I can make them better. I can help them with their trauma. These people need to want help. They're going to drown and you're going to end up drowning with them. It just perpetuates a cycle of abuse. You know, they're going underwater and you're going under with them. And it just ends up making you drained is what that ends up doing. And it ends up enabling their behavior because you teach people how to treat you. And so the more that you try to set boundaries and then they don't end up respecting them and then you let it go and then it go, happens over and over and over again, the more that they just know that you're going to stay and they don't have to respect your boundaries and then they can treat you however they want. So it's essential that you prioritize your well-being and your boundaries and you set your priorities and decide what your self-worth is going to be and protect yourself. The next one is that 
they're just misunderstood. I'm the only one that understands them. I get them. I see who they truly are. They're really actually a good person. They act like they're not good people, but I understand them. They're good people. They're just misunderstood. It's so common for people to misunderstand that they're like, oh, they're actually really good people underneath all of this and attribute like their behavior to trauma. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people who've been married for 30 years who think, you know, the reason why that they had been staying for so long is because their trauma and that they really understood I was helping them and that I stayed because of that. You know, they basically have held you captive all of these years by through these promises of I'm going to, I'm going to get better and I'm going to do the thing and I'm going to do the work. And it's, it's six months away. And now it's a year away and now it's two years away while understanding the root causes of their behavior can be beneficial. It's never really an answer because it doesn't get you where to, to where you want to be, right? They, you actually have to see progress. You actually have to see them fulfilling on the promises that they're making you. And that's the part that you don't actually see happening. So this is where you have to see them follow through on their promises and actually get help and, and do the things that they say they're going to do, which is things that they don't do. Before we continue, make sure you hit that subscribe button and become part of our empowering community. And if you need phrases for disarming narcissists, make sure you grab mine at disarmthenarc.com. Are there phrases for invaluable strategies for disarming narcissists and reclaiming your power? So make sure you do that too. And, and join my free pri private Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. So the next lie is I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Thinking like, I'm not good enough, so there's no point in me leaving, or I'm not smart enough to like do anything else. They get you thinking like that you can't do anything without them. You can't make decisions without them. And the next one is actually pretty similar, which is they know what's best for me. So I'm not good enough and they know what's best for me. Or they undermine your self-worth and instill these feelings of inadequacy, like that they're the smartest ones, that they know everything. And I've been in these client meetings where they're like, oh, he knows everything or she knows everything, where they think that they're God. People think that they're God. Trust your instincts. They're not. Know that you have self-worth. You're probably a whole lot smarter than you think you are. The next one is that if you do decide to break up with them, that you can work this out in a collaborative approach so that you can work through things because you can't, that they're going to somehow not lie to you, that they're somehow going to work on your, on your behalf for you because they're not going to. If they were lying to you before, they're going to continue to lie for you. Everything is a manipulation. Just remember that. Just know that it's their fear of being alone that is continuously manipulating you. They want to control you. You have actually way more power in this relationship than you realize that you do. So if you found value in this, make sure that you like it, share it, comment below. I want to know what your comments are, but I have the power and make sure that you have subscribed, hit that notification bell. And I want to know what your feedback is today on this. What other lies do you see people telling themselves? Stay in it, stay calm, stay empowered, stay strong. The next video that I want you to watch is narcissists do this when they are jealous of you. Narcissists do this when they are jealous of you. Pretty interesting to know what they do when they're jealous of you. Remember, they only win if, if you give in. And remember that today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. So I will see you in that next video. Shopify helps millions sell billions around the world through their digital courses, through their digital products at the touch of a button on their smartphones, on social media, however they want, including me at shop.rebeccazung.com. You can access your store from all over the world. Just the touch of a button from your smartphones, start accepting payments, everything you need to sell online, manage orders and develop relationships in one place and look fabulous doing it. Shopify is the commerce platform that is revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide, including my own at shop.rebeccazung.com. So right now, what you need to do is sign up for a one 
$7 a month trial period at shopify.com slash best life, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash best life to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash best life.